So at the time of filming this video, it is September 9th, late in the afternoon, and while we still have no announcement from Nintendo around any upcoming Nintendo Directs for the month of September, I do think we'll see that next week, but we had another company by the name of Sony, who you guys are probably familiar with, hold their PlayStation 5 showcase today, and I wanna cover all of the major announcements that came out of this event, my opinions on them, and when we can expect some of these major AAA titles to release. What's up nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Subro Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. As I mentioned guys, we're talking about Sony today, not Nintendo like we typically cover here on Sunbro Nation, but I'm very excited to share my initial thoughts and opinions around this Sony PlayStation event because we did not see them hold anything over the summer that was really that notable. We had them do a couple state of plays around games that were upcoming for release, but we did not see them hold their big E3 level blowout event. And we do know that over the last couple years, Sony has tech technically completely pulled out of E3 altogether, but they typically still put on some kind of major gaming showcase around around that same time frame, and this was that for them today. So I am excited to break down all the different announcements. They opened up the showcase on a super high note for me because I don't know if you guys know this about me or not. I can't remember, I've, I've talked about it a lot in videos, but I am a huge Star Wars fan and we are getting one of the, arguably one of the best Star Wars games completely remade, and that is Knights of the Old Republic. And there's not much to show about this game and not much to talk about right now because the trailer was only cinematic and that probably means we're quite a ways out from the official release of the Star Wars title. But as a fan, it is just super exciting to know that it is going to be on the way and this will absolutely be, I mean, even though I haven't seen the gameplay, I can still tell you guys that this will be a day one pickup for me as I'm very excited to see what this remake is going to deliver. And you know, there's been some hit and miss Star Wars games over the course of time, but for them to pick such a fan classic like Knights of the Old Republic and give it, you know, what looks like the full on AAA treatment, like I think they will be giving it, it's very exciting for me. So I will be sure to keep my eyes on this one for any future gameplay trailers that we might see. And then from there, the next game they showed is a new IP and one that I'm not familiar with at all, but the game looks like an absolute banger and I will be picking this up day one. Like it, the trailer alone and the gameplay from this got me sold. And that is one by the name of Project Eve that is coming from Square Enix. And this game just looks overall incredible. It has super fast action combat that that looks really immersive and i'm sure with the dual sense controller they'll probably pull out a lot of new tricks that you know make you feel like you're actually connecting with the enemies when you hit and the overall design of the world how graphically impressive the game looked and then just the combination of that with the fact of the fast dodge roll type combat that I tend to like as I am a hardcore Dark Souls style of gameplay fan. And I think that this is going to deliver on that type of, of vibe for me. And it does appear that there's gonna be some platforming and different things thrown in there to kind of mix it up as well. But, you know, providing that this game offers a decent challenge and plays even anywhere close to what it looked like it played through this trailer. Again, this will absolutely be a day one pickup on a new IP for me. Now from there, we had Tiny Tina's Wonderland, which is a spinoff from the Borderlands series. And this game does look beautiful. I mean, we're definitely starting to see the next generation level of power come out of the PS5. And this is a game that if you like the more cell shaded art style type of style of a game, this game was going to deliver on that. And while I'm not the biggest Borderlands fan out there, I have played quite a bit of the first one and then even part of the second one, but I never got really hooked in or pulled into that world. So this one for me, I probably will skip over, but it does appear that, you know, for the Borderlands fans of that universe, that this is going to offer some great gameplay and a new installment in the Borderlands universe. So let me know in the comments down below if this this one was exciting for you guys at all as you know for me it looks good but it's probably again a game that i won't be picking up at release we then got a really cool gameplay trailer for a game by the name of forespoken and this one will be out at spring of 2022 and this is another one that you know i'm gonna have to watch the reviews and definitely see people talk about this game as it gets closer to release but just from what they showed off here and what the technology that they're going for with the ps5 this is actually really impressive and one that will surely push the envelope on what is graphically powerful on the ps5 is the developers did actually previously state that they are aiming to deliver the best looking graphical open world on a console to date. So I do think that they're going to deliver on this from the looks of it in the trailer. And it's one that the gameplay looks enticing enough that I'll be sure to keep my eye out on this as we do get closer to its spring of 2022 release. 
Now from there, we had a couple update trailers that I'll quickly briefly go over because there's not really a lot that stands out to me from these games. We had Rainbow Six Extraction, which I know a lot of fans are looking forward to, but you know, myself, I'm very likely to not pick up most first person shooters. It's just not my style of game. And while there may be a lot that fans are excited for in this installment, it's one for me that I won't really be, you know, paying any attention to. We then got an update trailer for Alan Wake that again, this is one that I did not experience the original back on the Xbox 360, but now this game will be remastered and brought to all platforms for the first time. So they did briefly cover this and it, you know, graphically it looks really nice, but let me know in the comments down below if I should be picking up Alan Wake remake and what style of game it really is. Cause again, this is one that I have not looked into hardly at all. And then we got a update trailer for Grand Theft Auto 5, which if you can believe it is going to transcend all the generations over the course of time, because this is a PS3 and 360 game that is now going to be making its re-release debut on the PlayStation 5, if you can believe that. And surprisingly enough, we have to wait until March of 2022 to actually get this ported remastered title. So it definitely seems like GTA 5 is the Mario Kart 8 deluxe of the other consoles. And it's like, Rockstar, give us something new already. I mean, I'm not a hardcore Grand Theft Auto fan. I'll definitely play them when they come out and when they're the new ones, but it's like, I'm pretty much done seeing the title GTA 5, and I'm definitely ready to see what they have up their sleeves next. So hopefully GTA 6 is a great one, but as long as this one keeps selling, just like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, as long as everybody out there keeps buying it, we're gonna keep getting more of that print money button type of strategy, which is just re-release it on the current gen consoles. And by the way, it's not even out in the holiday season. We're gonna make you wait until March. So this one for me was just kind of funny, more of a ranty type of feel, because I just think it's ridiculous that Rockstar has not actually put given us any kind of footage, release date, or at least put effort in that we know of uh, on something like a GTA 6. But hopefully we see that at some point in the near future. We also got Ghostwire Tokyo updated. It will be released in 2022. And this is a game that I'll keep my eye on. Again, first person perspective. It looked kind of interesting, but it wasn't one that really like made me want to say that I'm going to go get this game day one. But I'm sure there are a lot of fans out there that got pumped up from this trailer as it did do a good job selling kind of the overall vibe of the game and the lore behind it. So this one will be one that's out in 2022 on the PS5. And then that was followed up by a Guardians of the Galaxy trailer, which does look really fun if you're into Marvel style superhero games. And I'll be curious to see what this one plays like because it's actually out right around the corner on October 26th of 2021. So let me know in the comments down below if this one got you guys pumped. I'll probably skip over it myself, but I'll keep my eye out there. And if there's a lot of fans that are saying that it's a great day, day one pickup, then I probably will look into it. We then got an announcement trailer for a game by the name of Blood Hunt, which does appear to be a battle royal vampire style of a game, which sounds kind of crazy in and of itself. And the game does look exciting, but it's one for me that I'll probably skip over as well as it just didn't do anything to really stand out amongst all the other games that we saw at the event. And then spend some time on a game that I don't even really know exactly how to pronounce it. I think it's Chia or Tishia. I can't quite tell, but it's kind of like a cutesy type of game where you're on an island and then apparently you can actually take the form of other animals. And you know, the trailer, it looks like it's gonna be probably a fun game for a lot of fans out there. It didn't really do anything at all to sell me specifically. I did notice that she's taken the leaf and using it like a sail straight out of Breath of the Wild. So they have that going for it there in its comparison. But you know, in all reality, this is one that didn't really get me too hyped or excited. And I don't really have too much to say about it other than that. And if you guys know how to pronounce the game, the name of it, just go ahead and throw that down in the comments. So I know going forward. We then got an announcement for Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection, which is apparently a remaster of Uncharted 4 and Uncharted Lost Legacy. And the notable thing for this is this was actually the only reveal at the showcase that will actually be coming out on both the PS5 and the PC. And we will probably continue to see Sony release certain first party titles on the PC as they have stated in different interviews that that's something that they are exploring. And that is something that, you know, I will keep my eyes out for personally, because I thought that hopefully we might get some kind of Bloodborne announcement at this event, maybe Bloodborne. 60 FPS patch or a new version coming to the PS5 and then it also releasing on PC as there's been a ton of rumors around that and if you guys don't know Bloodborne is a spin-off from the Dark Souls series so it's definitely one that I was hyped for and it was sorely missing from this event for me but for all the Uncharted fans out there I'm sure they will be happy to pick this up on either the PS5 or the PC at release. And from there, we had another brand new game announcement, but one that was CGI only with no in-world gameplay or graphics showcase, but it is exciting to know that this game will be in development. And that is actually one from Insomniac. They revealed that they will be developing a Wolverine game. And if they achieve anything near what they delivered with the Spider-Man franchise on Wolverine, I think that that's going to be very excited. And I will be definitely watching to actually see some gameplay and some action from playing as Wolverine as the initial trailer obviously looks great, but it's also pre-rendered. So we don't know exactly what to 
expect but I do think if they put that same level of care and fidelity into a Wolverine title the same they they did with Spider-Man I think that's going to be a very exciting day one pickup for me so this one did get me hyped just a little bit disappointing that we have no other information other than the fact that it's in development right now now from there we got a big update around Gran Turismo 7 and while I'm personally am not a fan of realistic racing simula simulators at all this is one that at least looks incredible I mean if you just appreciate the graphical fidelity and the work that the developers put into the world that they created here it's very impressive and typically racing games especially the realistic ones are the ones that typically can show off what a console can really do so it does look beautiful it's one that I will skip over but it is out on March of 2022 for any of you guys that are interested in this as that's going to be you know obviously a big update to actually have a release day for a game that a lot of people will be anticipating but for me I'll take my like super unrealistic arcade style racers like I'm more pumped about cruising blast on the switch than I am about this game but again it does look beautiful so if you are a fan of realistic racing style simulators maybe you are, you are looking forward to Gran Turismo 7. Now another game that followed the trend at the event here of just only cinematics but definitely an exciting announcement that it is in development is that we saw Spider-Man 2 officially revealed and the big punchline for this game is that we will now get the inclusion of Venom in this universe and I think I'm going to be super pumped for this as it gets closer to its actual release as we can confirm it is a 2023 title so they're definitely showing it way out in advance of the schedule and that's kind of the overall theme of a lot of these reveals from this event that's kind of where I would say it had some negative aspects for me even though I'm super pumped for Spider-Man 2 it's like I know I can't even count on this game to be talked about again for quite some time and I know that it's actually not releasing until 2023 which is quite a ways out from where we're at right now but at least we know it's in development and at least we know that Venom is going to be what appears to probably be a lead character so I will be excited to see where this one goes as we get closer to its eventual release date now the final announcement in the show closer and the big one for me if you guys don't know I'm a huge God of War fan one of the hardcore series that I play every single time there is a new installment that's out on the PlayStation consoles and we got a God of War Ragnarok gameplay trailer that just simply looks incredible if you guys played through God of War on the PS4 and enjoyed that game or that world or that lore at all it looks like they are going to be far following that exact same formula it looks like it's going to be graphically upgraded obviously but then just deeper story and deeper lore and a lot of returning characters as well as some new characters and this trailer just did a fantastic job hyping up the release of this title and unlike the other games that I've been kind of dogging on for not showing us very much they didn't give us a release date here but you know we got a good glimpse of what the world is going to look like what the gameplay actually looks like whenever you're in combat whether that be with the axe or the chaos blades like this thing looked incredible all around and I cannot be more pumped to eventually play through this when it releases now it does appear that some time has passed by as Atreus looks quite a bit older in this trailer and it looks like he's going to have some of that teenage year rebellion against Kratos so I'm sure that this father and son story will continue and will be very entertaining and interesting and I can't wait to see what they're doing with all the returning characters and all the new characters so if you guys can't tell already this is going to be a day one pickup for me but I just simply don't know when to expect that and they almost kind of trolled the audience at the end with a you'll get more answers soon that you were wanting to know the answer for so maybe we'll get like a dedicated god of war state of play i can definitely see them doing that as sony typically follows that formula for their big titles and we even got that for horizon forbidden west already which was originally supposed to be a 2021 game and then got pushed to 2022 when god of war ragnarok was first showed off it did have 2021 pop up at the end but i don't think anybody was really expecting that because they didn't even show us any kind of gameplay or any glimpse of the world at all and now we have that so i'm sure it'll probably be around the corner hopefully soon Sooner rather than later maybe something like a first half if not just the beginning of the second half of 2022 type of release but I will absolutely have my eyes and ears open for any new God of War Ragnarok information and at this point in the video guys I really want to hear from you and all your thoughts and opinions on the Sony showcase today which game had you most hyped which announcement was your most hype announcement and are you interested in picking up any of these titles or maybe if you're not a PlayStation 5 owner right now was there anything here at the event that will motivate you to go pick up this console if you can find one because obviously that's still a hard task right now but let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the event overall which game stuck out to you and which ones you're looking forward to the most as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around this topic thanks so much for watching the video today everyone I do truly appreciate you all sticking around until the end I do at this point in the video want to invite you all one more time to join Sunburn Nation if you haven't done so already do so by subscribing below hit the like button in your way out if you enjoyed it today and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news that's gonna do it for me guys I hope you all have a great day Sunburn Nation out oh my God. That's
thing that I thought was a platform. Moments of crisis. Panic does nothing. Dude, it's so oh, far along. Uh, I love this. Yeah, we're, I think we're getting a release date at the end of this. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Tear. That's Are Rollins? you coming with us? Damn. He's massive. Release date. You'll get your answer soon enough. A uh, call right now. That was Ares resurrected. Or uh, well, what's it called? Uh, uh, what's it called? I think that was her response to me not getting the release. I day. know. I think that's exactly. Face. Dude, no. Uh.